How's it going guys? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a video on how I like to use VSP, Open VSP for aircraft design. But today I want to specifically talk about VSP Aero as I've been using it for the last several months. And uh, I've learned some handy tools that, and tips that I'd like to share with you guys. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get to it. Here you'll see what I call a cruise vehicle. It's just an airplane. It's an RC airplane that I'm working with in my workshop. And uh, I've created this model of it so that I can try to capture the aerodynamics of it. Um, so this is true to the real world model. I've taken all the measurements and I put it in here. I'm not going to talk to you today about how to do this, but I'm just going to assume that you know how to do this. And uh, I want to talk specifically about VSP Aero. Uh, so I'm going to go here to analysis, open up VSP Aero, and here we can see the VSP Aero uh, GUI, which is going to allow us to run uh, an aerodynamic analysis of this model. Uh, you see here we have two options, either the vortex lattice method or the panel method. Um, at this point I'll go over to this PowerPoint. So there's basically some a couple of things you need to know about VSP Aero before we go into it. Um, VSP Aero is either a vortex lattice or a panel method solver. Um, really the VLM method it models uh, your aircraft as thin plates, thin lifting plates, and really should only be used to capture lift and uh, induce drag effects and some moment effects uh, from those. Uh, the the any fuselage components when using VLM will contribute a bit to the, to the moment, but it won't do a great job. Um, then the panel method should really be used when you want to take into account thickness effects of your components. Uh, so if you want to model you know, two thick wings in close proximity to each other, you should really potentially use a pan panel method for that. Or maybe a really thick fuselage is in your geometry, well then you want to use a panel method again. Um, I often don't use the panel method though because it tends to crash a lot um, as of uh, open VSP, uh, what is this version, 3.26 is what I'm using. It still crashes quite a bit. So hopefully they get the team gets that fixed up uh, pretty quick here. Uh, but for now, I just stick to the VLM. Uh, so a couple tips for using VSP Aero. Uh, VSP Aero will work with any units so long as you're consistent. Uh, the easiest units to work with are feet, pounds, slugs, and seconds uh, if you're working in imperial units. But if you want to work in, uh, in uh, standard metric units, then uh, meters, newtons, kilograms, and seconds for everything. So it doesn't matter which one of these systems you use as long as you're consistent when you're doing your geometry and your velocities and your densities and things of that nature. Um, and I, I really suggest just sticking to one of these two because going into like centimeters or inches will significantly complicate your life. Uh, another important thing to remember is that moments in uh, OpenVSP are calculated about the center of gravity. Uh, so you won't actually know the neutral point unless you run a stability analysis and have that spit out. Uh, VSP Aero outputs forces in two coordinate systems, uh, body fixed or wind axis. Looks like I forgot to add in the wind axis, but uh, so there's two main coordinate systems. Um, and then uh, a lot of people want to know how to calculate drag from the vehicles uh, in VSP, but one thing to note is the VSP Aero is, does a bad job at calculating the parasitic drag, which is the base drag, um, or uh, the viscous drag from boundary layer uh, and skin friction effects on your vehicle. So really the best practice is to calculate the parasitic drag by hand and then add it to the lift-induced drag that VSP Aero calculates to build up your total drag uh, of your system. Okay, I'll stop talking about those things and go straight into the modeling. Uh, so I want to show you here how I'd model uh, an alpha sweep from negative 20 to 20 in five points. Uh, I'm not going to include beta effects for now. Uh, for mock we'll use a 0 0.05, which is basically zero, but really all the mock does is doesn't actually affect the free stream in the VSP Aero model. It really just creates compressibility effects using the Glauert correction. So I'll let you guys look into, into that at a later date, but just know that this mock won't affect your flow. Again, similarly, the Reynolds number won't affect the flow. It'll really just uh, 
it's really just used to calculate that base drag. But again, VS Piero does a pretty bad job of calculating that base drag, that base parasitic drag. So you should do that on your own separately. Um, okay. So taking a look at the reference areas, you can specify it by hand if you click manual, or you can extract it from your model. Here I'm going to use the cruise wing, which if we look at my geometries is actually my main plan form. And yes, that is correct. That is the one I want to use for my reference area and reference length. Uh, one thing to note is that if you are interested in using this Reynolds number correction, uh, it's going to use the C ref or the cord in this box to do that uh, calculation. So that's the non dimensional length it's using. Um, and then here uh, you specify the CG. And as I said before, the moment of your vehicle, so all, all the pitching moment or the yawing moment or the rolling moment will be calculated about this location. Um, and that's just to simplify uh, the analysis. And so you always know exactly where the moment's being taken uh, because the neutral point can often move with angle of attack and be non-constant. Uh, but you really want all your forces delivered in a constant, about a constant location. And so that's why they do that. Uh, so here I've set it to something that makes sense. My model zero zero point is actually at the leading edge of my wing. And so my CG is just a little bit after the CG of my wing. Uh, I've tried to get it to cord to cord, uh, but it approximately is okay because I can always uh, move it in my post-processing steps. In the advanced tab, you'll see a lot of different options. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through the ones which I think are most important. Uh, you could choose to use XZ symmetry here, XZ symmetry, um, if you are doing a half model. But since I'm doing a full model and my model is pretty simple, I'll go ahead and leave that unticked. Um, there's a second order Carmen uh, mock correction, and that's again to take into account uh, compressibility effects. You can choose to leave it or not leave it. I have a pretty low flow speed um, and a pretty low mock number, so it's not really going to do anything uh, no matter if I leave it on or off. So I'm just going to leave it on. Um, for the wake, uh, I tend to leave the default values of six iterations and 64 wake nodes. Seems to resolve uh, my wake quite well into the far field. And, and then for the stall model, uh, you basically here you specify a 2D CL max, and uh, VS Piero will internally limit the pressures such that the CL max is respected. Uh, there's an alternate method of using this Carlson pressure correlation, and it comes from a paper. Uh, about what the max pressure over an airfoil should be. Um, I find that I prefer specifying a 2D CL max. In my case, I know my airfoils and I know what the 2D CL max is for these airfoils, uh, so I'll just specify it here. Uh, for control grouping, if you wanted to use control surfaces and deflect these control surfaces, here's where you would specify various groups, and then you would specify which surfaces correspond to those different groups. So for example, for my ailerons, uh, I'm going to add this surf zero aileron and the surf one aileron. Now by default, uh, a gain of one down here uh, will mean that the left-hand side is flipped. Um, so if you wanted to have symmetric deflection about your control surfaces, you would actually have to flip your left-hand side one to a negative one. But because ailerons, I want them to affect asymmetrically, I'm going to leave them both to one and one. Uh, elevators, I have a V-tail. Uh, so I kind of have these things called rudder-vators. And so I'm going to add those to that. Um, and I don't have a rudders uh, group. So I'm actually going to remove that. <clears throat> but as I said before, my rudder-vators, I actually want these to deflect. Uh, well, let me actually take a step back. For a V-tail, I actually want independent control surfaces. So I'll actually remove one of these. I'll add a new group, call this uh, rudder vader left. Go back to my other elevator and call this rudder vader right. And then on my rudder vader left, I'll add the left rudder vader. And that way I can control it independently of the other rudder vader since there's a, a yaw and uh, pitch mixing uh, for the rudder vaders. Okay, viewer console, show you your outputs. We'll come back to this. But with these settings, this should be enough to run a basic steady state model. 
And uh, just uh, to show you guys what a deflection looks like, I'll deflect my ailerons five degrees. The right one will deflect trailing edge down. The left one will deflect trailing edge up. And it'll create a left rolling moment, uh, I believe. Hopefully I'm right about that. We'll see in the post-processing. So I'll go ahead and launch this analysis. I just want to double check that I enabled parallel processing. So number of CPUs, I have four. I technically have eight on this machine and I could use more, but I don't want to stop the run. So I just let it finish as is. I guess while this is finishing, I'll talk about resolution on the wing. Uh, you can see how I have a pretty steady growth rate amongst my quads along my wing, at both the span-wise and the cord-wise direction. Um, I might have my wing a little bit over-resolved at this point. Uh, let's take a look at my geometry and my cruise wing. Yeah, so I have 45 in, uh, what is that, the span-wise direction? Oh, sorry, that's the cord-wise direction. And uh, I have 45, which is overkill. You actually probably only need 5 to 10. So good thing I checked this. So you need pretty sparse resolution in a panel method to get this to resolve correctly. But anyways, we'll skip that for now. And I will take a look at the VSPO results, which is, whoop, that's the viewer. Here's the results manager. Um, you can see that I have uh, my span-wise load distribution. Uh, CL times C over C ref is non-dimensionalized uh, cord. Is the basically the local lift distribution by non-dimensionalized cord. If you want to look at straight up CL values, you can look at here, and you can see that at high angles of attack, my lift coefficient has been uh, capped at that 1.4 I specified in the advanced tab over here. <clears throat> So here we can see we have an asymmetric loading, and that's because I deflected uh, my ailerons, and we'll look at those in the viewer in a second. At, in the sweeps panel, we can see my alpha CL, and we can see that after 10 degrees, my lift distribution starts to actually taper off a little bit, and that's because of that uh, stall uh, capturing. Now, it's not perfect. It's, this is just to get a rough idea of when stall starts to happen. I wouldn't, you know, take this to the bank, this, this stall region especially. This is more just to understand roughly when stall happens in your model rather than exactly what happens after it. Uh, my CDI, okay, that looks good. There's a minimum around zero, and then it increases at negative angles of attack and positive angles of attack in a parabolic form. That makes sense. Uh, we'll take a look at CFZ. CFZ looks basically like my CL, which is correct. Uh, let's look at my pitching moment. So we have a negative slope on the pitching moment, which means our aircraft is generally stable. Uh, we can take a look at the L over D of the vehicle. We can see we reach a max L over D of, what is this, almost 15 at zero degrees angle of attack. And that's pretty good. And that's partially because I have cambered airfoils on this vehicle. Cool, so we'll take a look at the viewer. Where is that viewer at? Here it is. So here you can actually look at your different test cases, your different solutions. You can add pressures to the surfaces and really take a look at those different pressures. We can see that there's a stagnation point on my leading edges, which is accurate. What's that? Let's add my legend here. So we can see, yeah, um, positive values of static pressure in the stagnated regions. Uh, and then my, there seems to be a bit of downwash coming on my vehicle here. That's why there's kind of that low pressure region. But again, I wouldn't trust what's going on in the fuselage area that much. Um, let's draw the trailing wakes. The trailing wakes are pretty cool because they give you an idea of your pitch angle. So the wake actually deflects with changing angles of attack. We can draw our control surfaces deflected. So we can see that, as I predicted, my right aileron is deflected trailing edge down. 
my left aileron is deflected trailing edge up. Hard to see in this model, but it is. And it, this creates, uh, yeah, a roll to the left. So that's pretty cool. And that's that. All right, well, I'll stop talking now. I'll leave you guys with this slide so you guys can look at this at your leisure. These tips have helped me a lot in my modeling. Um, I'll be making more videos about how to use VSP um, and the various tools within it. But if you have any specific questions, drop them in the comments below and uh, I'll try to address them in the next video. All right, thanks guys.